thank you all for coming to this session so uh, let us guide uh, the uh, i mean uh, today we have uh, one moderator and then uh, five speakers are there so i'll do one thing uh, first of all uh, i'll uh, inform what all uh, the procedure we are going to follow there will be an introduction session i'll call uh, i'll invite uh, the moderator and the speakers to the dais then after that the moderator will uh, moderate the event and uh, once all the mod all the speakers completed their session uh, then the uh, forum will be open for the question answer session then uh, so i think we can uh, start uh, so uh, i would like to invite uh, madam uh, varsha joshi she is additional secretary uh, additional secretary in the department of animal husbandry and dairy and ma'am warm welcome to our session the session named opportunities for youth in the livestock sector we have dr rajesh sharma who is group head in the national dairy development board and uh, i would like to invite dr rajesh sharma to the dais sir we have another speaker uh, mr nirmal choudhury from uh, milk station who is speaking about the role of entrepreneurs entrepreneurs and youth in the livestock sector welcome sir we have dr arindam mukhopadhyay he is a manager production from uh, west bengal livestock development Bo corporation so welcome sir you can seated here then uh, promoting digital tools in livestock farming we have uh, mr rahul ganapati he is a founder of atsuya technologies welcome sir for our session then uh, last but not the least the very important subject which is uh, the opportunities to enhance the access to resources credit and services to increase the entrepreneurship in the country will be uh, we have speaker dr lipi serival she is deputy commissioner from the department of animal husbandry who is dealing all the credits related schemes and entrepreneurship related schemes a warm welcome to dr lipi serival so ma'am now uh, the forum is open to you good morning everyone i hope i'm audible yeah uh, thank you dr sulekha for uh, uh, sulekha is actually the main sutradhar of whatever the department is doing in world food so thank you for all you do for us sulekha our session today is about opportunities for entrepreneurship and uh, when you talk about entrepreneurship you of course the word entrepreneurship entrepreneurship goes with the word youth and we are talking here about the livestock sector which is one of the fastest growing sectors with some of the best potential especially for growth in the rural areas so we have a very distinguished panel today we have dr rajesh sharma who looks after all fodder development related activities in the national dairy development board or we have uh, dr arindam from the west bengal livestock development board it's, it's got a long name i'm sorry i cannot remember the full name but it's basically the is it pashchim banga go vikas no 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 it is uh, west bengal livestock development corporation okay uh, popularly known as harin ghata harin ghata oh you have a brand too great we'd love to hear about that we have dr lipi who's uh, from our department and looks after all the inter subvention entrepreneurship development schemes uh nirmal choudhury ji whom i'm meeting for the first time and looking forward to hear from you about your entrepreneurship journey and dr rahul at from a company called atsuya who has been doing a lot of very innovative work uh, as a startup so i'd like to start with dr arindam we'd like to hear about how a state government and agencies of the state governments can uh, promote a sector like this slides Oh, so hello namaskar 
माई फेलो डेलीगेट्स एंड वर्ल्ड फूड इंडिया मुझे माफ़ी देना अगर कुछ गलती हो जाए तो इट्स माई फर्स्ट टाइम एक्चुअली सो वी नो दैट इंडिया इज़ अ वेरी बिग लैंडस्केप इन द टर्म ऑफ रूरल एंड एग्रीकल्चर एंड वी आर एट द कस्प ऑफ लाइफ स्टॉक रेवोल्यूशन ऑल्सो द सेक्टर हैज़ ए बिग बिग पोटेंशियल एंड कैन ड्राइव अवर इकोनॉमी वेरी फास्ट इन टर्म्स ऑफ जी डी पी एंड रूरल डेवलपमेंट ऑल्सो बाई फॉस्टरिंग द ऑन्टरप्रनरशिप अमंग द यूथ वी कैन एम्पावर दैम टू बिकम द कैटलिस्ट ऑफ दिस ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन creating sustainable livelihoods and contributing to the vibrant and resilient livestock industry can we change the slide please i don't know okay I uh, I have changed it at my screen but full screen ka kitna no no i guess when she okay thank you thank you so but we see livestock sector as particularly among youth as very unattractive because they think that livestock is a very laborious work it's cattle rearing soil management it's a task that no one wants to do it's a cow dung but uh, it's not like that and it belongs to rural geography also people don't want to go to rural india they want to come out of the villages and go to cities work with it hai you na know? but the reality is far from that i am from a rural background i work in a small city and we have developed a good dairy processing unit and as a entrepreneur we have come ahead a long way however the reality is more different india has the largest cattle population we are the highest milk producing country in the world and have a significant geographic demographic dividend also our youth is there who can work more on it as a developing economy we have serious concerns like job security food security and technical technological development also but we see that livestock sector particularly plays a pivotal role in indian economy providing employment to millions contributing significantly to the gdp and ensuring the food security to our growing population the growing global demand for indian livestock products particularly dairy meat present a unique opportunity to our entrepreneurs and youth and we can tap this lucrative market entrepreneurship in india extends just beyond cattle food meat milk and its production we have various opportunities and on which many of the delegates will be speaking there is a investment in new technologies like ai data management cattle behavior fodder management maintaining hygienic conditions we have many things to work on optimization of current processes like adopting new technology in the dairy process and accessing to the monitoring service to all the stakeholder holders India's youth has energy and innovation and entrepreneurial spirit to drive this force and in the nation's progress entrepreneurship offers many things such as self sufficiency to our youth we know that our youth does not want a 9 to 5 job actually so they want to move toward entrepreneurship journey only so we should not just see it or other sectors as a entrepreneurship journey dairy also is a big opportunity right now economic empowerment also is there and personal fulfillment for young people D- despite this opportunity sorry despite this opportunity we have many hurdles in dairy sector financial hurdle is the first one uh, from buying cattle to machinery everything requires a huge capital because it's a capital intensive business it's a labor intensive business and obviously we don't like all this we want to open a it sector from a room and touch the globe and limited market access also as i told that it's a geog- it's a geographical market it's a rural market people have to go to ru- rural areas villages and work on that and today's you don't want to do that but if we take up the task that will be a huge thing for everyone so the last thing is there is a huge disconnection between the rural business and the urban market if we start in the rural area 
the biggest problem to reach the market which is in tier 1 and tier 2 cities it's a biggest problem for livestock sector business also and rural economy also we need to bridge that to bridge this gap we need more guidance support system from the agencies the platform such as wfi <coughs> to bring people like us on this platform and showcase the world our products facilitating the market access and finance also to the rural economy and encourage the involvement of agencies we see that as a rural based economy we have also experienced all these challenges in our journey we collect the milk we process it we sell it to the rural areas only but we need a more bigger market and for that we need logistic supply chains finances and everything the future of our food industry lies not in just milk or meat or anything but in value added products also india is going and transforming from just milk and by product to the value added products more nutritional product so we see that we are going for the protein deficiency market in india that uh, we have all kind of milk products but we don't have protein rich products in the market so obviously there is a big market coming in the foreign industry investments are coming in for this protein market and it's not just it's just beyond smp and ghee everyone sees dairy as that to capitalize this the youth and new entrepreneurship pranars should focus on such products educational institute like nddb and dhd also and investment agencies also should look like this we need to prioritize this, this sector in terms of investment also uh, not just subsidies uh as a country we are evolving right now as economy also we are evolving our consumer demands are also evolving consumer demands are shifting toward more new products rather than the traditional products the new age consumer seeks novel products and novel solutions to every old demand and old products and presenting this opportunity to the entrepreneurs of today so that we can cater this demand and fulfill this demand to the market and we should work on more innovative products and by working together we can harness this potential and cater this market sorry i was little boring but this is what it is <laughs> we know that government is doing its bit in this work but more ecosystem is need to be developed in this market the ecosystem is not as good as we which should have if we see the european or us can uh, us area then but uh, all the stakeholders should need to come together and encourage the youth and entrepreneurs to work on this sector more entrepreneurs will come forward if something like this will happen wfi is one of that platform which we see as a good platform for working like this and that's all i think all we need to do is take the first step and start at least thank you thank you nirmal ji i think you have put on the table uh, very succinctly the issues that uh, the session is really supposed to discuss though i am more keen to hear about your own uh, personal journey of your own company but we'll come back to you we have a lot of time for that i would now, now like to request charindam ji if you are ready because uh, how are the gaps that nirmal ji has described how do you propose to fill those gaps good afternoon everybody myself dr arinda mukhopadhyay having about 22 years of experience in field of veterinary about 12 years in frozen cement bull station and 8 years in meat industry we work in a company under west bengal government from 10 crores capital in 2019 it evolved to 3000 crores plus turnover in 2024 wbldcl west bengal livestock development corporation limited is the fastest growing and profitable organization of government of west bengal now our vision is to provide protein to our 6 million happy families of our state first then nationwide our mission is to provide good quality protein through our different type of products from our livestock producers 
these are some of our ventures like broiler breeding farms, broiler integration program, meat plants, feed plants, meat processing and value added products unit, meat cold storage, Horingata meat shops for young entrepreneurs, Horingata live bird selling, epic brand animal feed, and so on, drug breeding farm, pig breeding farm, sheep and goat breeding farm, and Clark, the most unique of our sister organization, which deals with contract research organization for our esteemed educational institute and pharmaceutical companies. And lastly, Academy of Animal Resource Management, where we provide training to our rural and semi-urban youth about animal husbandry skill development. Currently, there are more than 300 crores worth of ongoing projects across West Bengal to improve the livelihood of farmers of West Bengal and enhance the backward integration of feed mills, layers, and cold storage. Now, we come to the main point, which I will want to share with you. But before that, some points we have to consider that meat production, animal produce, main animal produce we obtain after milk is meat. But before going to, to the actual discussion, some points we have to consider. Animal products derived from food animal or broiler birds require hygienic screening like antimortem, postmortem, health history, etc. and technology driven processing to obtain diversified food products. Second thing is awareness regarding stunning. Stunning is making unconscious before promote human sacrifice method. Nowadays, we don't use the word slaughter. I use human sacrifice method. Then, assurance of high degree of exsanguination means draining of blood. In India, there is a concept of taking muscles, not meat, because from conversion of muscle to meat, it takes about six hours in poultry and about 24 hours in sheep and goat. So assurance of high degree of ex exsanguination is very much necessary as human stomach is unable to digest the blood. And it is the main problem behind the taking of more meat within a short period of time, it leads to digestive disturbances. Then another point is low temperature based conversion of animal muscle to tender most meat to increase its shelf life and characteristic keeping quality. These are the methods we follow in a meat plant. And lastly, accuracy in relation to product traceability through printed information on packages. It is the most important part. <clears throat> it is our one of meat plant, Horingata meat plant, three pictures. The uppermost picture is pork processing plant, the middle picture is sheep and goat processing plant, and the lowermost picture is poultry processing plant. <clears throat> These three plants generate employment for a mass of almost 500 people directly and a few thousand people indirectly. A not sale of chicken meat processing through pictorial representation. This is our flagship project, Broiler Integration Program by WBLDCL. With the help of state-of-the-art input generation facilities like broiler parent stock farm, hatchery, branded feed, and group of technical personnel, WBLDC engage almost 2,000 broiler farmers under this program. Corporations' engagement in broiler integration project through supply of DOC, all categories of broiler feed, vitamin mineral supplement, and techno management related support of experienced group of vet. Poultry farmers produce required broiler chicken body weight ranging from 1.8 to 2.2 kg for corporation's meat plant. HMP means Horingata meat plant, PMP means Fasidava meat plant, utilizing their infra and labor support as per standard terms and condition framed by WLDC to generate good amount of remuneration in the form of growing cost and bonuses. 
Now we come to the unique features of Horingata meat, Horingata brand. Horingata brand ages about 75 years now. Horingata meat is the cheapest among processed meat variety of Eastern India. Chicken, chivon, mutton available in both fresh chilled and frozen. Fresh chilled means self life for 72 hours or 3 days and frozen have a self life of 9 months. Pork available only in frozen variety. We assure cold chain from production to retail outlet. Production facility got certification from FASAI, APEDA, EIA on completion of satisfactory regular inspection. Plant operation follow ISO, 9, 000, ISO 20, 000, 2018 guidelines, food safety management system, and protocols of state pollution control board. And it is franchisee driven meat marketing covering entire West Bengal to promote self employment. Chicken and its products prepared from broiler birds exclusively collected from farms managed under broiler integration program of WBLDC. Another unique point is ideal package quantity starting from 250, 250 gram to cater the optimum protein intake per family. There is a thumb rule, 10% of body weight you have to take as animal protein per day. If you are 60 kg body weight, then actual quantity is 60 plus minus 10 gram per day animal protein. So the smaller packages actually confirm the optimum animal protein intake per family. Wide range of product diversification like thai boneless, lollipop, biryani cut to minimize the taste fatigue of consumer. Meat, if you take regularly a single item of meat, you definitely feel the taste fatigue right, the, of your tongue. So we periodically change our product and promote the sale of our product. <clears throat> Nutritionally improved and traditionally processed value-added product like sausage, ham, salami provide round-the-clock protein supplement. We have sausage for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, and afternoon snacks. Optimum keeping quality and unique organoleptic properties made Horinghata Chicken a premium online processed meat brand of Eastern India. Our number one client is the smart startup online like Zomato, Swiggy, etc. Next, our flagship project is goat meat through women empowerment. Women operated farmers, producers, companies supply best quality black Bengal goat reared by members of FPC only after getting satisfactory health checking by local animal resource development department official. Chivan production plant is the only APEDA approved semi-automatic goat sorter unit of Eastern India. Product diversification include goat chop, goat boneless, goat kima, goat liver, to fulfill the long awaited demand of Chivan loving people of Bengal. Black Bengal goat, nature's gift to people's world's largest delta. Black Bengal variety distinguishing features are high fecundity, the only goat variety from that goat you will able to get at least three kids after every alternate kidding. <laughs> Favorable meat to bone ratio. In goat breeds of northern India and western India, the large leg part contain only bones up to 75%. But in black Bengal goat, the stout, stumpy legs, there is about 50% bone, 50% meat ratio. Through state government ARD policy, locations with huge natural BBG population, goat cluster or farmers producers companies are formed involving at least 300 to 500 women goat rearing individuals. Round the clock technical supervision with on time deworming vaccination and need based vitamin mineral supplementation convert this program into export quality BBG supplying enterprises. Now we are supplying about 800 kg to 1 ton BBG goat meat to Baharin every week. 
Horinghata Meat Plant, oldest division of WBLDC, now able to receive 150 to 200 black Bengal goat per day from those progressive APCs to cater both domestic and international demand to a great extent. Now our... There's a lot of confusion and a uh, lot of running up and down. If there's a big crisis, can I help you solve it? If you have to do it, we can wait, you complete, and then uh, we can continue with the session. It is done? Thank you so much. Anyone who's standing, I think there are still a few seats if you would like to sit down and enjoy the session. Horinghata Park. During second 50 year plan in India, seven vacuum factories are established. The only remaining vacuum factory is at Horinghata Meat Plant till date. And we're using those instruments still now to produce the actual goat uh, pork products. One of the oldest brand when pork, bacon, pork, salami or pork sausage is taken into consideration. State of the art pig slaughter facility operated by highly skilled personnel and monitored by team of experienced veterinarians because pork is very much susceptible to different type of worms and diseases. So thorough technical supervision by veterinarians is always required. Sophisticated own input generation farm to eliminate the chances of common pig related food contamination. Now the next uh, part of uh, my uh, topic is entrepreneurship development. On an average meat processing units of WBLDC produce 5 to 7 metric ton diversified frozen meat items daily basis. Strict cold chain maintenance through refer vehicles and according to consumption pattern of particular locality, frozen meat and value added products are stored at different cold storage located all over West Bengal, Viz, Horinghata, Fasidawa, Belgachia, Bardawan, Krishnanagar, Nodia, Badampur, Islampur, Siliguri. Satellite cold chain we established. Prime marketing and sales strategy of corporation is to provide cheapest frozen and wholesome meat and meat products through creation of retail dealers or bulk seller covering semi-urban and rural areas. Anybody can avail dealership through online application at corporation's website followed by depositing a nominal security deposit. 5,000 if you have a room and 50,000 if you want to get a chest freezer. Only one condition, no other Horinghata shop within one kilometer. Unique advantages of meat dealers of WBLDC. Door stepped product delivery, maintaining cold chain assurance through online refer vehicle temperature monitoring app. Each and every dealer monitor the te vehicle temperature on a mobile application. User friendly and dedicated mobile app for order placement. No need to inquire which product is available, which is not available. On mobile app, every dealer can able to show the product details and as per availability, they can order. Real time delivery vehicle location tracking through mobile app by dealers. When the vehicle will come to his shop, Multiple cashless payment making channel. Periodical dealers meet for providing information on sales promotion and food safety guidelines. Some pictures are attached. Every location, prime and most prosperous dealers are always encouraged by regular programming. <coughs> now, next topic is product diversification and value addition. WBLDC cater meat market requirement through its two major diverse categories, frozen and chilled. Frozen minus 20 degree, chilled below 4 degree. Chilled meat category mainly consists of chicken and chivon. Parties with bulk requirement mainly supply chilled variety like Taj Set Caterer, Taj Group of Hotels, like uh, Big Basket, they are bulk consumer of WBLDC. Frozen category again divided into raw meat and value added meat products. During raw meat preparation, as per standard, 
ए लेफ्ट ओभार मिड भैर कम आउट डिवएड अफ स्पेसिफिकेशन लाइक चिकेन उंगलेट्स चिकेन स्किन बोनलेस स्ट्रीमिंग चिकेन बेस्ट टेंडार और सुप्रीम चिकेन नेक थीन मिट अफ गोट एबडोम गोट फैट एटसेट्रा साम अफ दिज एडिबल बाट नट स्टैंड नन स्टैंडार्डाइज मिट आईटेम्स लाइक चिकेन स्किन बोनलेस स्ट्रीमिंग चिकेन ब्रेस टेंडार एटसेट्रा यूटिलइज फर प्रिपारेशन अफ भू एडेड प्रडक्ट्स भू एडिशन मीन्स एडिशन अब निट्रिशनलि सूपिरियर भेजिटेबल प्रोटीन इन दि फर्म अफ बैंडार कोटिंग एजेंट और फ्लेवर एनहेंसार इनक्लूशन अफ स्पाइस कन्डिमेंट्स एंड हार्बस टू इम्प्रूव द एरोम टेस्ट एंड सेल्फ लाइफ एंड प्रसेस लाइक इमालसिफिकेशन टामलिंग पार बयिंग अफ एनिमल प्रोटीन टू इम्प्रूव द डायजेस्टिविलिटी अफ ह्यूमैन स्टमक most unique step taken by wbldc annually wbldc prepare and publish modification also done during adverse market situation standard procurement price for almost all food animal and birds order attached any progressive animal rearing enterprise or individual comfortable with corporations rate contact with marketing department of wbldc to fix the supply schedule for their food animal to meat processing plant hum log ye nahi bolte ki sab kuch humko de do jab tumhare paas market nahi hai sale ke liye sachcha price nahi hai to hum log ko puch lo hum log le lenge to actual philosophy is to establish the animal product market pricing system which is not available in case of dairy it is available but in case of other dairy products the standard pricing the minimum pricing index still not developed wbldc working on that and within 5 to 6 hours a comparative pricing will be fixed for all the livestock produce and pe people will be then encouraged to go for animal enterprise or animal farming some of our pictures of our project this is a 21 lakhs layer birds farm this is kollani duck breeding farm having two breeds pekin and khapi campbell and in case of pekin duck we already initiated the pekin integration project this is layer farm first time in eastern india layer breeding farm our feed plants and for dairy sector silage making we have a vast area of unused land there we that all the land are previously with ard department they transferred it to wbldc there we produce mainly uh, maize and from maize we prepared that silage for dairy sector our pig farm sheep goat farm and that clark one unique thing is that they, they are we able to receive some special mice variety from john hopkins university that particularly required for uh, medical research on parkinson's disease the only institute in india to have such type of mice and our management or training institute कन्क्लूशन में यही बोल सकता हूँ मैं वेस्ट बेंगल लाइफ स्टॉक डेवलपमेंट कॉरपोरेशन गवर्नमेंट ऑफ वेस्ट बेंगल ओन एंटरप्राइज थ्रू इट्स वाइड मल्टी डायमेंशनल कमार्शियलि भाइबल एनिमल हजबेंड्री एक्टिविटीज एबल टू डेभलप सेमी आरबान एंड रूरल कम्यूनिटी अफ एनिमल प्रड्यूस एंटारप्राइजेज उइद इन ए स्पैन अफ मेयरलि ए सींगल डिकेड टू एस्टाब्लिश फरवर्ड लिंकेज फर डायफाइड मीट एग प्रोडक्ट्स थैंक यू i think that was a totally stunning presentation it is rare to see any kind of government organization giving a presentation like this i think our colleague from nddb is also astonished at the level of uh, first i think one must say the level of trust you have built as a government organization the trust you have built with the farmer also the entrepreneur also and the customer also it shows the kind of 
seriousness, the kind of dedication with which this work has been taken up. My sincere compliments to your whole team, to uh, Dr. Utpal also, who's here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to now uh, call Rahul, who has been doing a lot of very interesting uh, scientific innovation in the livestock sector. A uh, very good afternoon, uh, distinguished moderator, Varsha ma'am, and the esteemed uh, co-panelist on the dais and uh, people uh, on the audience. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. What I thought in the last one day when I was going around, there is innovation everywhere, right? It's all bustling out there. You see all kinds of stalls. You see all kinds of people. There is absolute energy around this event. What I thought would be is, how do we celebrate the entrepreneurs who are already there doing this? So what I thought, I will highlight some of the successful case studies and also, rather than talking about challenges, talk about the opportunities that are there uh, uh, around us in the livestock sector. So I'm going to be focused on talking about how digital intervention has transformed this agriculture and the livestock uh, space and what is in it in front of us, ahead of us in terms of an opportunity. Before I do that, uh, I am the co-founder and CEO of Atsuya Technologies. We are uh, a startup established in 2017. And um, after 15 years in the IT industry, um, I was actually working on one interesting problem in the US, solving the problem of food wastage for Walmart. And we helped Walmart save a billion dollar in terms of the food wastage. That led to the idea, okay, if this is a big problem for a global giant, it's going to be a much bigger problem and it needs to be addressed. And we started this venture in 2017 to solve the problem of food wastage in India. And today we serve almost 95% of organized meat retailers in India and 65% of quick commerce where we ensure the food is fresh and the data is even fresher than the food, right? So that is how we work. Today, we focus on eight out of the 17 uh, UN SDG goals, saving energy, reducing food wastage, accountability of water, and the entire supply chain traceability uh, uh, from a farm to fork standpoint, inclusive of taking care of the animal, uh, part of it, how can we improve efficiency in the operations in the entire supply chain is what we typically do. While we do all of this, one thing from a significance of digitization that we found out is how can we have a unified ecosystem? See, today we are in the era of robotics, automation, where today you are actually looking at not reducing people because the moment we say automation, when we say robotic automation, process automation, people often think, okay, is there going to be a reduction in manpower, right? I think that's the first myth we all need to break and say it is not reduction in manpower, it is empowering people to be more productive, to be more efficient in the way they operate is what the first aspect. So for that, there has to be a unified ecosystem. It cannot be uh, a farmer can only look at animal, no. It is responsibility ends after collecting the milk? No. It is to make sure that the same quality milk is reached to the processing plant, it reaches to the where the bulk milk chillers and directly to the end shelf. Right? How Sir beautifully talked about temperature controlled supply chain, it builds trust as ma'am said. Right? How do you really bring all of these players? It's not just one single player, it has to be a unified system. And the technology is fast evolving, right? Today, you are seen using drones just for spraying of uh, uh, insecticide and pesticide. No, I think we are far ahead today with multispectral imaging. We are able to see what is under the earth in terms of water table. Today, there are very interesting use cases of drones being used to monitor a herd. And with temperature, you will be able to spot out a particular animal and say this is actually having a temperature difference and you can actually pull out that animal so that you don't have the impact on the herd. I think the progression in terms of technology where even the network, if you look at the GPS and satellite 
technology and the amount of investment that is going in the space sector it is something for the livestock segment to leverage the investment that is going and very interestingly in one of the conversations with ma'am we were talking about how pashmina goats can be tracked right and it is a it is a matter of safety it is a matter of uh, improving the uh, productivity uh, uh, even in the unreachable uh, area right and today we have technology that is available and everyone spoke about payments right how seamlessly today a farmer is able to get the payment for the 40 liter or 50 liter of milk that he is coming and bringing in instantaneously which is what it motivates now this is all coming to a a ecosystem which is a unified ecosystem where there is a lot of handshake but one thing that we are all missing is there is so much of data that is actually getting collected which is not getting used which is not getting analyzed so how can we actually have informed decisions right can i actually have a uh, 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 intelligent uh, root optimization model for me to kind of go and plan the um, uh, delivery of goods can i actually have a predictive uh, analytics to kind of look at equipment failures in my operations uh, those are things that i think we need to look at i think that's where the policy advocacy and regulatory interventions would be very very helpful for this end of the day it is about creating a thriving farming system when i say thriving farming system it has to be sustainable and we need to also take sustainability as an important aspect to focus on what is really uh, happening from a implementation standpoint now very specifically on iot ai in livestock there are numerous case studies or startups or entrepreneurs today especially the youth because what really excites the youth so when i left the job from a high paying job uh, uh, what really excited me hey there is application of technology there is which is evolving always right no one thought that we'll be able to write the session in fact the image that you see on the left was generated by ai right when i actually pointed out this is the scenario that i'm going to be talking about it is about leveraging tools to go and accelerate the adoption that is anyway there which is technology is growing today we are all craving for problem statements can i actually identify that need which can actually give me uh, um, uh, uh, access to technology where i can solve that particular need thereby i can get scale i can get support from the influencer clients or first clients for us to kind of go and really scale this particular technology right i think there is so much of opportunities available around us today we are actually talking about fitbits for human apple watches i think the same is available for cows right uh, we are able to kind of put chips uh, when elon musk is talking about implantable chips in the brain i think there are also chips available which are actually kept under the feathers of a bird to understand what is really happening uh, from a health of the uh, bird okay and there are very interesting startups i think uh, all of you should definitely visit the dhd pavilion so whatever i am talking you can actually see that live in action and i'm going to highlight some of those startups in the next because it is a time to celebrate startups it is a time to nurture them and enable them and we being one of the startups and we know the kind of support that we are getting in from the government and i think that is something that everybody should leverage and they should not neglect as my friend nirmal was telling dairy is not about cows and dungs right dairy is contributing 4% of india's gdp and it is it is a revolution it is something that is uh, giving us the uh, um, um, uh, opportunity for india's growth story right i think that's important now what we look at is a multimodal um, sensor data right today we are actually getting data from drones we are getting data from satellites from a, a climate standpoint and uh, when there is a, 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 a opportunity for us to look at every minuscule thing that is happening in the supply chain um, um, uh, today you have a 10 minute delivery possible yes there can also be a 10 minute ambulance that is today available for uh, 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 the livestock for the farmers to kind of take the animal there is also a uh, uh, sufficient amount of like how you have the dark stores today you have the artificial in, uh, insemination station that is spread across india as a network that is available for people to leverage uh, a tech and, and and really avail the services from the government right i think it is important for us to look at insights and maybe there is a need from the government to look at very specific policy interventions to 
um, uh, motivate a lot of more entrepreneurs to come in and, and, and give them the platform to perform. See, all entrepreneurs are looking at is, can I actually have an implementation possible uh, with one of the state government? That is something that is something that is will be a great motivation for entrepreneurs to come and youths to come in, right? Because they would have seen their dad, mom uh, 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 with the animal in the field doing this and they might come out with ideas, okay, this is this can be automated, this can be digitized and there can be like a greater ecosystem. We are looking at marketplace and when I go to Sri Lanka, when I go to different places, you see UPI everywhere, right? And, and there is so much of seamless payment integration, cross-border exports that are possible. I think that is all I think the youth should be empowered, which is happening, and it should happen in multifold with the growth of population that is there. Now, if I look at a complete tech-enabled value chain, right? See, today there are very interesting startups like the Cropin, who actually can map literally a small parcel of the land and tell you what is really happening in the land, right? And you have companies like Cowbit, who are actually tracking the cows, uh, like the Fitbit for the cows, Right? And you have drone startups uh, uh, that are there which can actually map um, and, and there is one uh, startup which is Digi Wet Care. It's basically the Digi Atra or the for the cows or the Aadhaar for the cows where you make the cows smile and, 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 and which is run by uh, 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 two uh, entrepreneurs who, who have started this at the age of 60. Right? I think it is, it is all there and, and, and very specifically uh, when we started working with Department of Animal Husbandry, we started also looking at very specific unsolved problems and this cryogenic uh, can containers that we are working to monitor temperature is one of the um, need that was discussed out of the Animal Husbandry Grand Challenge and that gave us opportunity to kind of conceptualize this product and go, right? And, and if you look at startups like Bharat Mandi, you have actually they're evolutioning the entire supply chain in terms of the software and other uh, things that can interoperably talk to various uh, uh, other units, right? So likewise, if you look at when I talked about the ecosystem, it is always from the farm to the folk. It is end to end, right? Today we are working with the Jarkin Milk Federation. We are working with uh, the Amul uh, for reducing their plant operation cost by eight to fifteen percent. And what it does is it has a major impact on bottom line because even a, a fantastic presentation from the, from the West Bengal uh, team uh, uh, person, right, sir? You talked about business, right? You talked about how this can actually enable um, uh, adoption, how it can actually enable scale with technology coming in in all facets, right? I think it's important that every business should look at technology as a paramount foundation thing for them to really look at, okay, how can I get this? And it is very affordable. Today, you are able to get the lowest of network cost in India, nowhere else, right? You are able to get the low cost electronics boom that is happening in India, you will be able to get devices at a very, very low cost and rugged devices that can actually scale and sustain. I think if you just look at the milk value chain, is itself is big, right? And you have um, uh, uh, entrepreneurs who are actually uh, working with camels and donkey milks and everything, right? It is it is a great set of innovation that we are looking at. Nobody would have thought, my, my mother would have said, or you would have heard stories that you go rare donkeys if you don't study. But after engineering, I found one of the startups in one of the uh, uh, and, um, uh, events. They are actually doing soaps and, 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 and exclusive products from uh, donkey's milk and which is being used by the cosmetic company. So it is it is there, it is there, it is the intent that needs to come in and, and we all need to kind of get to that particular uh, stage. Now, very uh, interesting, the global population is growing at 70% in 2050, we're going to be there. So what are we going to look at? We need to really look at food security. If we don't have farmers, if we don't have quality produce, we are going to be dependent on another country. And I think that is an important aspect, which is, I think inclusive access to technology is going to get us to that state where we are going to say, okay, we are going to be the leaders because we have the power of the youth with us, unlike the other nations where there are a lot of aging population which is there, but we have a good amount of youth that is there. I think that is where we need to channelize. And thanks to a lot of the government programs like the Atal Innovation Missions, where even school students have come, come coming out with great ideas in terms of the tinkering labs and other things which are actually happening. So that is one thing. Fairland distribution. India is known for small hold farmers, 
small whole lands, right? Which one cows, two cows, uh, uh, um, very, very small land parcels, right? How can we actually have, uh, uh, according to an FA report, uh, 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 which has come, can we look at 38% uh, of the land being allocated to farming? Right? Is, is something a recommendation that was given by FA so that we ensure that there is something available for all of us to kind of look at. And, 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 and I was very happy when he said uh, a big land was transferred to us and we are actually doing silage there. Right? So it is, it, any opportunity is going to give us more uh, avenues for us to look at new business models, new ideas for us to kind of take that and, and, and grow. The other thing is often we say, uh, cows are the largest uh, emission in terms of carbon emissions uh, contributing, right? About 24% of greenhouse gases from agriculture and uh, the allied uh, set of industries. I think that presents, uh, uh, it was, I don't know if it was coincidence, there is a parallel event happening on water, right? I, again, it's an important aspect how we need to really take water energy, we need to take resource efficiency very, very seriously. So where we reduce wastage, where we look at optimize in the way we look at, there are today various technology available in uh, zero discharge plants, uh, um, STPs that we can actually reuse. I think uh, from the government bodies, uh, wherever there is cooperatives, I think there should be a lot of focus on providing or enabling those cooperatives to look at progressive technologies to kind of bring in. And today we are very Progressively, India, NDDB and others are talking about dairy sustainability framework. I think we are one of the important countries who are actually adopting dairy sustainability framework where uh, pilots are happening uh, uh, in two states uh, as we speak. And that will put us in the map, in the global map of really embarking on uh, such a scale being the largest producer of milk and other dairy products. I think it's important. So climate justice is very, very important. And I think reducing environmental impact should be part and parcel of every initiative that we need to look at. Now, you can look at uh, barriers to adoption. Always barriers are there, but there is also opportunities around the barriers. Uh, affordability is going to be one important ask. Can I actually have a low-cost device? Can I actually have solar-powered device? Can I actually bring down... So I think this is where your public-private partnership, today you have a lot of pu public-private partnership for solar, you have a lot of things for devices and others. I think that's one uh, important aspect. Number two is usability. India is a rich country in terms of various culture, languages. So how something like uh, a Bashini AI can be used in agriculture so that we can actually say, okay, I, I'm able to leverage the same content for various stakeholders and farmers is something that is going to really help in the adoption, whether it is training or easiness to use technology. I think everybody today has a smartphone and there are also startups who don't have smartphones. I was very surprised to see one startup uh, uh, when I was talking to them and they're today partners of Google for the Google payments. If somebody is having just a feature phone with the uh, um, uh, unique sound waves emitted by the feature phone, they are able to do money transfers between two phones, right? Is a company called Tone Tag, right? And that is phenomenal invention, right? We don't see one immediate thing they say is this drivers will not have smartphones, this farmers will not have smartphones, but how can we have tech to enable these transactions is something that I think we need to really look at usability and penetration in terms of technology and relevant data. So when I say data is going to be the new oil, yes, it is the new oil. I think we need to really look at data Today, we are able to, from our company, we are able to even predict a failure of a chiller equipment inside a dairy plant or a meat plant one week or 10 days ahead if there is a refrigerant leak in a cold room. That is the kind of power of data. Today, we are able to go take predictive analytics and, and really look at forecasting, utilization. Uh, we are able to tell if a particular refrigerator is occupied, not occupied, meaning uh, utilized or not utilized. I think that's the scale uh, which we are need to look at. And I think there are a lot of policy related support that would be really helpful to really bring in data as a data fabric that can go across all uh, um, uh, facets of the value chain. And last is the um, 
uh, infrastructure development, which is connectivity. I think connectivity by large India is been doing phenomenally well in, in terms of even in the Leh Ladakh region, we have good connectivity or the LIDAR and other technologies today available for us to get Wi-Fi everywhere and, and, and everything. I think that is uh, an important aspect. And there is a great opportunity. I think low productivity is a concern. I think we need to look at digital tools and interventions for increasing productivity, climate change and animal health issues. Yes, there can be a lot of algorithms uh, that can be used to predict what is really happening, predict the heat cycle, predict uh, um, 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 when, when this animal needs uh, attention and care in terms of predictive diagnostics and stuff. And uh, the innovation hub in terms of market access, I think that's where scale will be a great boon for us saying, can I actually have supply chain center of excellence in each of these districts for us to look at that market access, which can actually uh, connect the uh, buyers and sellers in terms of in every region that we could look at through the ONDC network because ONDC is an important uh, um, driver now which which can actually change everything in terms of the market access and affordability and breaking that monotony of private players also coming and dominating a particular sector right and uh, growth accelerators I, I think uh, autonomous farming robots uh, uh, like how you have the US FDA going heavily down on traceability and food safety. I think that's also an important aspect that is going to be uh, changing the way we are looking at those as growth accelerators because that awareness among the consumers of good quality food produce is coming in and uh, value creation in terms of livelihood and, and, and the overall uh, food security as we talked about. And finally, I think um, institutions, private companies, um, and the government getting together and, and creating this ecosystem will actually make it even more appealing. So with this, I uh, conclude my speech and I am saying the future is really bright for the youth and the entrepreneurs and, and, and really, really looking forward to working with the government, private part groups and also the institutions to take this to scale. And I think the future is ours for the next 15, 20 years. It is for us to transform. Thank you, Rahul. That was uh, pretty inspiring, I think. Thank you. I'd like to now invite Rajesh Ji, who has been leading a unique initiative of operating 100 new fodder FPOs across the country. And uh, please. Good afternoon to all. Uh, respected ma'am, distinguished uh, speakers and friends. Uh, we all know that uh, the breed, feed, uh, health and management, these are pillars of the successful dairy. It's not coming to sir? Yeah, okay. So, I was talking about the, the four pillars of the success of the dairy, that is breed, feed, uh, health, and management. And uh, feeding becomes more important because uh, uh, it uh, accounts for about 70% of the cost of the milk production. Uh, I'll be uh, talking about uh, feed and for the scenario, the uh, little information on that, and then the opportunities uh, and the uh, other things which are happening there are different uh, areas where entrepreneurship can help. And uh, lastly, the fodder FPS which we are working on. Uh, just to have a brief idea about uh, uh, the, the feeding practices in the country. Uh, about 50% uh, the, the crop residues are the basic, the basal diet of our dairy animals, roughly 50% followed by uh, the green fodder, which is about 20, 25%. Half of that comes from the cultivated fodder and half comes from the, you know, uh, pastures or forests. The rest is uh, the, the concentrates part, compound feed, uh, brands, cakes, etc. This situation is completely different than the uh, dairy developed world, which uh, our, our, my previous speaker was also mentioning that uh, we need uh, some report is there that 38% area is needed. But I'll be coming to the next slide that uh, we have only uh, 4 to 5 percent uh, of net cultivable area under fodder production. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, and that's the reason of, uh, you know, poor productivity. But higher productivity need intensification. And uh, this is uh, the, the, the major difference between us and the other countries that is uh, 
दे ग्रो ग्रेन्स एंड ग्रीन्स स्पेशली फॉर द लाइफ स्टॉक प्रोडक्शन एंड दैट इज बिकॉज ऑफ द दे हैव लॉट ऑफ लैंड एंड वी आर नॉट प्रिवलेज फॉर दैट वट एवर इज लेफ्ट आउट इन आर कंट्री इज बींग फैड टू द एनिमल्स यू कैन सी ऑल द आइटम्स मैंशन देयर दे आर द लेफ्ट आउट विच आर नॉट यूजेबल बाई द ह्यूमन बींग्स क्रॉप रेजिड्यूज सिक्सटी परसेंट फिफ्टी परसेंट द पास्चर्स लैंड एंड द ब्रांड्स केक्स विच आर नॉट यूटिलाइज बाय द ह्यूमन बींग्स यू सी द सीनैरियो द डेफिसिट स्टेटस पब्लिश रिपोर्ट दिस से ओवरऑल इन द कंट्री देर इज एलेवन परसेंट ग्रीन फॉर्डर डेफिसिट इन ट्वेंटी Uh, dry fodder deficit and uh, about uh, 29% is uh, deficit in case of concentrates challenges uh, there are many uh, one is uh, the the land uh, which is stagnant for the last many decades uh, and uh, <clears throat> another is uh, whatever land we have the productivity of that land is very very uh, low lower side and uh, the the availability of the quality fodder seed is uh, around just 25% and uh, the the prevalence of uh, the the machinery and the burning in some surplus states and uh, the the wastes uh, except uh, northern part uh, the most uh, uh, farmers they are not using chaff chaff cutting and others leading to uh, dry fodder and other wastes then because fodder is bulky of course there are some surplus in some areas but because it's bulky it adds to the cost then inadequate extension services and also now the the fodder is being diverted to the energy sector then uh, there is absence of organized market so that is why uh, uh, many farmers they are not taking up this activity as a you know growing fodder and there is a more preference to the grain or the cash crop uh, now i'll be uh, discussing about the different activities which has uh, scope for entrepreneurship and which are being popularized or which are being taken care of by Uh, different fodder plus fpos which are being promoted throughout the country uh, through 100 fodder fpos the first activity as i told you there is a deficit of green fodder so to meet that deficit there is a requirement of conserving the green fodder in the form of the silis silis is nothing but it's a you know preserve green fodder in preserved form that's all and which we can use at uh, you know when there is a deficit uh, uh, of the green fodder in the lean season or you want to transport it somewhere there are many methods uh, like you know you can uh, make for farmer for his own use can make it in the pits or he can make in the silos bags but if you want to trans- transport then the bale silos is needed as my previous speaker also told that they have also doing this in west bengal and uh, many fpos now they have started this activity of producing by engaging small small farmers in, into the activity uh, uh, some they have uh, procured the machinery as well as uh, some they are taking help of the entrepreneurs which are uh, you know providing the machinery to them uh, one silage machine installing one silage machine uh, the brings the uh, you can say uh, covers about 100 hectare additional into the fodder production so together these uh, uh, fpos would help you know uh, developing about uh, you know 3 to 5 lakh ton of the additional green fodder into the system uh, next uh, is uh, uh, you know uh, another way of enhancing the green fodder in the uh, uh, country that is uh, through perennial grasses promotion of the perennial grasses the you grow the uh, crop once and then it give fodder for 3 years or 5 years depending upon the management there are various uh, grasses like hybrid napier there are uh, the the guinea grass and there are other uh, congo sigil and other things which can be taken care of but the problem is again the the right uh, you know the, the good quality of the seed material so here entrepreneurship is required at we can say at each district level or you can say within 2 3 districts where the seed plots can be developed by the entrepreneurs here is just an example of one entrepreneur who took uh, some slips from ndtb uh, around uh, 10 years back and now he is supplying the uh, these uh, root stem cuttings of different varieties across the country many areas is providing uh, third is uh, uh, i told you there is a deficit of uh, uh, dry fodder so how we can increase it 
there are you know combined harvesting and sometimes there is a very less period between the harvesting of the crop and the sowing of the next crop so quick uh, 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 gathering or the you can say quick aggregation of the material is required so here again the baling is the option so immediate baling and then keeping it some place and if we want to transport it some other places then enrichment can be done or even the densification can be done and can be sent to uh, the far off uh, areas where there is a deficit in different uh, uh, districts or different states uh, we are also uh, working on this uh, uh, aspects of densification uh, two plants have been set up under national dairy plan one is in maharashtra another is in uh, sri ganganagar where densified bales or the densified you know pellets they are being prepared then uh, the one of the challenge was uh, there is a deficit of the quality uh, for for the seeds uh, about 25% 15 to 25% so here again the entrepreneurship is required where you know many farmers they are com com coming up they want to grow uh, and uh, which can help in you know uh, increasing the uh, the 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 for the seeds in in the country uh, through fodder apios and through dairy cooperatives under the scheme nationalized stock mission uh, NDDB has been able to increase about three to four times the seed production what was being previously done in the last two to three years. So here, you know, the the seed production activity along with the processing activity that can also be taken up, and two three milk unions they are taking help of the uh, the 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 plants which are set up by the entrepreneurs. Uh, we have in our country a lot of wastes going on. Uh, from fruit and vegetable industries uh, about uh, estimates say about there are around uh, 300 million metric ton uh, uh, the waste is being generated so how that can be conserved so good techniques are required technology is there but we need to bring efficiency and uh, at the at the you know cheaper level if it is made available it can be utilized few experiments we are doing and uh, uh, you know have started we have a unit in uh, Ranchi, uh, this uh, uh, the, the Safal unit Ranchi, where P ports are being uh, empty P ports are being generated. So uh, it is being conserved in the form of the silage and being supplied to the farmers. There are you know other options, where, uh, other items are available like uh, tomato pomes, like uh, banana uh, peels, and even mango peels for which we are also trying. So there is uh, a, a huge scope in this sector which can add, which can augment the uh, for the resources in the country. <clears throat> now, if we wish to uh, improve the productivity, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, you know, we have just uh, 2,000 liter uh, per lactation in the country, and average uh, world, uh, world average is around 3,000 liter. However, in many developed countries, it is around 12,000, 10,000. So if you want to improve, because a lot of breeding programs, they are improving the genetic potential, but how to harness that? Then the option comes, the, we have to feed animals, mixing everything together. It's a simple concept, mixing everything together, dry fodder, green fodder, as well as the concentrates, uh, which will help in, you know, generating or creating a very good environment in the rumen, and the microbes will eat it, and then they will make the micro microbial protein, which will help in increasing the quality and the quantity of the milk. So, a uh, few, uh, two, three years back, we started experimenting on it, because you know, green or the silage is being added, so we need to uh, you know, increase the, or the, check the self life and see the aflatoxin of the mold growth. So about four months we have checked everything. If you uh, make uh, uh, the green fodder based or you can silage based TMR, there is no issue, no aflatoxin and nothing else. And uh, later on uh, we started on the you know, pilot scale and then uh, one plant is coming up in the Amul to uh, prepare this uh, TMR to be supplied to the farmers and uh, one more is being also set up by Banas Milk Union. So many more milk units they may come up and even it will be taken care of through fodder appeals. Uh, there is, uh, you know, immediate requirement. We have also done, you know, ration balancing program to educate farmers how to feed balanced ration by taking help of the technology and, uh, you know, uh, advising the farmers at the local level by visiting their doorsteps. So those kind of the, uh, you know, initiatives which will help not only advising them what kind of the resources to be mixed and which feed to be taken at what stage to be given and what crops to be taken along with that. 
the even even if it is uh, providing uh, you know uh, sourcing the mechanism from where they can come so those kind of the innovative solution that also requires a lot of you know entrepreneurships then uh, farmers they keep on going from one place to another to uh, get the good quality cows and we all know that today's ca cows they are tomorrow's cows for that purpose there is a requirement of developing entrepreneurship in calf rearing uh, average age at first calving in our country is about 3 to 4 years however through scientific feeding it can be reduced by about 6 to 10 months so about 1 year can be reduced so here also there is a lot of opportunity if a entrepreneur takes up you know 40 50 cows uh, which are you know uh, which are which are taken from the farmers uh, you know born from out of ivf or you can say uh, using sex sorted semen they can be fed scientifically and can be given back to the farmers uh, some milk units they have already started this activity but it can be taken uh, you know through entrepreneurship also because uh, many 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 farmers they need the high genetic merit uh, the cows or the buffaloes uh, there is a gap between what is the technologies available at the institutes level or you know research level they need to be taken at the farmer level and we all know that uh, peer learning peer to peer learning is the best learning or seeing is believing so on that concept the the uh, development of micro training center at the farmer level at the farmer field in the the same uh, you can say location at the district level that can help a lot in bridging the gap of you know training and extension education and awareness so uh, this concept will help in uh, bringing the technologies bringing the skills and and you know other other literature other things at the farmer doorstep it doesn't require much uh, resources a uh, few uh, you can say chairs and table and then audio visual system and uh, 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 if uh, two days or three days pro program then uh, simple stay system so farmers can see how other farmers they are doing the dairying or doing the uh, you can say uh, fodder productions or 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 biogas or something like that so some demonstration that to be created so these kind of the entrepreneurship they are required at at you know district level where the farmers of uh, uh, the same place they can come and can see and can interact in the regional languages uh, now uh, we were talking about the fodder plus apio so the simple things about uh, that uh, these are the simple collectives of about uh, uh, 300 farmers this is uh, being promoted under uh, uh, the 10,000 apio scheme of uh, 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 ministry of agriculture farmer welfare and uh, the the uh, uh, ideas are that they uh, would you know create fodder hubs and there will be better production and the higher availability of the quality seeds and other inputs and the capacity building of the farmers will be taken care of and of course because these APOs they are being uh, promoted by uh, either the cooperatives or by the milk producer companies so they have a ready made uh, forward linkage with them. So this is uh, the, the different aspects what is being taken care of through them and uh, as of now uh, out of uh, 100 APOs about uh, 52 they have started their activities and they are engaged in uh, silage production green fodder production and supplying it to the farmers and few have, have them, them uh, they have also entered into fodder seed production activity and even supplying of uh, other items like uh, you know this uh, maize cake or you can say this uh, crust green to the farmers which are locally required it's just a simple status what is uh, as of now uh, 65 uh, cooperatives they are engaged into it they are working as a cbbos and uh, the uh, 99 fpos they have been registered uh, capacity building is going on and extension activities are going on and about i told you 50 52 they have started working and this is the fund release status of that uh, there are a uh, lot of schemes are available which many dairies are taking uh, you know benefit of them and uh, we are helping them to uh, uh, you know connect with this these schemes uh, under livestock mission lot of feed and fodder activities are being emphasized especially for conservation of the you know green fodder or conservation of the dry fodder along with that uh, very good uh, seed production incentive is being given for promotion of the quality seeds and then there is interest subvention in the AHIDF. So we are connecting the dairies as well as the uh, APOs uh, with, the, with these schemes. 
uh, overall the the entrepreneurship along with this uh, this fodder appeals uh, they can you know uh, have a great change and impact in the livestock sector that's in terms of the enhancing the milk productivity and uh, providing the, the the scientific advisories and scientific feeds and different kinds of the feeds and uh, then the the uh, uh, the conservation uh, in which silage tmr hay making that will promote it and will also help in providing a uh, circular economy because of using of the waste which is being generated through fruit and vegetable industries and then there there will be you know efficiencies and even uh, the the feed feed utilization efficiency will be increased and of course in the rural areas it is helping in creation of the jobs and uh, uh, providing the regular employment regular income to the farmers and of course it will help in uh, developing a organized uh, you can say commerce for fodder activities which has not uh, been developed as of now thank you ma'am thank you thank you thank you so much rajesh ji i would now request dr lippi to expand a bit on some of the things that uh, rajesh had mentioned about the schemes of the department of animal husbandry and dairying lippi i request you to keep it a little brief because of the time respected ma'am all the panelists on dais and everybody present in the hall am i audible yeah so as it has been mentioned in few of the talks that there have been some hurdles and some challenges so what as an in department of animal husbandry and dairy uh, is doing for the improvement of the sector not only the schemes we are also intervening in various policy matters so i'll very quickly sum these there are some eight points which we can do for the resources and you know incentivizing the investments and the credit and the services which will promote the youth integration in the sector so basically these are the three uh, few schemes uh, national livestock mission which uh, animal husbandry infrastructure development fund didf dairy processing and infrastructure development fund which has been subsumed and cooperatives can also avail this can someone help me with this which person yeah so one uh, it actually came just no radha can you just come here she's going backwards i think yeah Where is my second slide? Where is my second yeah. slide? Where is the first slide? Okay, I think we've missed one of the slide here. So, what are the most important measures wherein the youth can be integrated? So, uh, first is the financial support system. So, talking about the financial support system, we have various schemes in the department wherein we are giving the subsidies, grants, and Uh, uh the subsidies are being given to all the entities not only to state governments but to the individual beneficiaries private companies fpos cooperatives self help groups etc then coming then access to the technology so one one of the most important thing like it has been mentioned by you that technology integration is very important so all kind of technologies be, being dairy or you know value addition to dairy which will make it which will enhance the production mm. so that is being done by the department then skill development and training which is one of the most important thing here wherein the uh, department is providing various uh, uh, trainings uh, for the farmers and the entrepreneurs so that they can very well establish themselves in this field then coming the cooperative models so the youth can be you know motivated to form the cooperatives wherein they can pool the resources and the knowledge and can enhance the bargaining power in the market then fifth one is the infrastructure development as we've mentioned that department is also implementing various schemes so in spite of having the huge livestock wealth in the country there are two main reasons where we cannot compete in the exports and one of them is infrastructure and of course livestock health is one so department is taking care of that 
So we have different livestock health and uh, nutrition centers here where the advice for the veterinary care and the advice is apart from the state government network which we have. And also the market access, which will not only improve the transportation and the storage facilities, that young entrepreneurs can efficiently, how they can market their products. And coming to the public-private partnerships, then there, these are, there are some kind of collaborations which we can deal with the corporates so that these public-private co partnership companies can invest in infrastructure, technology, and support the youth. Also the innovative hub, hubs, wherein the creation of centers for innovation, where youth can experiment with the new ideas and practices which are being done in the livestock sector. The seventh one is the awareness campaigns and the outreach programs. Department takes care of them by our social media team also, and how can we promote? There are various models in the field who are not only the beneficiaries, but they have set up an example that how the youth has, you know, uh, they've led up some stories which can inspire others and have led a very successful career paths also. And then in, in information dissemination, that also department is taking care of, that how the social media and community outreach, which will raise the awareness and available about the schemes which are being done, about the policy decisions which are being taken in the department, and the opportunities which are being served as a platter to the youth is being given by the department. Research and innovation is the one of, one of the very important thing which we are doing here. So as technology has been mentioned here, that uh, this is a very important thing. So there are various research and innovation projects which uh, department funds. Uh, which can make this sector a better one. So very quickly, so the, uh, as mentioned, that two of the very important schemes of the department which can be taken up. I'll come to a slide which is, I think, will show that, uh, ma'am, her a breakup has been given wherein more than 22,000 people, more than 2,000, so these are all the youths who have come up and the investment, if we talk about, if we see here, the investment of these projects is 11,000 crores, and as a whole department has already leveraged the investment of more than 13,000 crore uh, out of these entrepreneurship schemes in the department. So this is the impact which our schemes have created. So talking about the direct employment is 50,000 plus, and more than 15 lakh of farmers have been benefited out of it. If we talk about the investment, it is 13,000 crore. So the department serves a pallet of 32,000 crore, which has been you know, served as a pallet to the uh, entire country, and the youth of this country can avail this, and this is a great opportunity, which I think all of uh, the youth can uh, uh, take uh, advantage of. And uh, so the key highlights, which is mm. that uh, we are aiming towards the breed improvement. The main focus is on the strengthening of the infrastructure. We are promoting the uh, movement from, org un from unorganized to organized market. And of course, the, as was mentioned by Dr. Rajesh, that the availability and affordability of animal feed fodder, which country is facing, that has to be channelized and agri-waste management. So these are some key, key points which I think if the young generation can mm -hmm. uh, take up and uh, put their uh, steps towards this thing, it will create a better world. Also, uh, uh, as of now, the schemes which department is implementing, if we talk about the various sectors, be it dairy, be it meat, be it animal feed, so approximately four to nine percent of these three major sectors so the country's total production, be it uh, milk, meat, that has been channelized through some of the schemes. So that's an achievement for us, and I think that can be, uh, that can be a point of advantage which, uh, which youth can take and utilize the resources which uh, Government of India is providing to them with this. So these are some small uh, case studies which wherein the entrepreneurs have uh, taken the assistance and this has added to the, the, the production capacity of feed and fodder has increased out of these. Uh, this was an FPO, uh, uh, this is an FPO in, in Madhya Pradesh, so who are 
whose turnover has increased and their capacity has also increased. They have been processing milk. And this is an, another example of one of the scheme of the department, which is uh, entrepreneurship development under National Livestock Mission, wherein 50% subsidy is being given. So uh, sheep and goat and poultry is being assisted here. And see the uh, uh, average in mon monthly gross income of about 2 to 3 lakhs. This is what have been generated. So these are some uh, case studies here, which I would like to show. So that's all from me. Thank you very much, Jahan. Thank you so much, Dr. Lippi. Uh, we have, I think, uh, around five minutes, Suleika. We can spend around five minutes since we started a little late. So uh, from my side, I would like to come back to Nirmalji and ask you a little bit about your own personal journey. How did you think of becoming an entrepreneur? What what was easy? What was hard? Where do you think you are today? Hello. So I am an engineer by profession, and uh, after my engineering, I went for civil services preparation in Delhi only. And during that preparation, I got to know that India has a huge potential in food processing sector, particularly. And but but uh, where does that food come from? the rural area and I belong to that area. I am uh, from Pali, Rajasthan. It's a small town. Basically, it's a milk hotspot also for Rajasthan. So I saw that as my strength and I went back to my, uh, in between I went for a few jobs also, but I went to my city. I saw that uh, the milk is very good, less adulterated and we can go beyond just milk and ghee. So we thought of uh, putting up a few uh, small plant and go for cheese or ice cream or the next stage way maybe in future. Uh, but I didn't see that uh, people in that area had uh, any knowledge about that private companies can come and collect milk and sell into the market. They thought that cooperatives have the monopoly to do this. <laughs> so first year was gone into that only that we can also collect milk and sell it. So. That's how the challenges come in. And for a manufacturer, I guess the challenges are more than IT or IoT thing, because you need to set up a manufacturing unit, then you have to take permissions from almost more than 25 organizations. <laughs> so that's very hard for any new entrepreneur. Many people sitting here, I guess you all are above the age of 30, 35. But a new entrepreneur coming to the market and uh, there is not knowing what all permissions need to take. He does not even know how to make a bill for his organization. And I'll take my own example. For first month, I didn't even, even uh, check all my bills that I, they have GST or not. I just uh, keep on giving bill to my cons consumers. After two months, I got GST rate. and. So that much of flexibility government should give to the new entrepreneurs actually, that they should teach them rather than giving or penalizing them. But it's a, this is a small example actually. See, uh, rules are meant to be stringent, but not meant to punish you. We are in a country where we make rule to prevent illegalities or crimes, not to punish them. That's why we say that so gunagar chhod jaye gunagar ko saza, ek be guna ko saza nahi milni chahiye. And that's what our constitution teaches us. We are Gandhian philosophy people. We don't punish people, we prevent them to do wrong things. I got to learn many things. This was just a little example, but that's what happened with the entrepreneur in day-to-day -day life. In the, um, you, you don't have data here, we have not shown you the data. We'll see that many entrepreneurs close their new journey within two, three years only. Why is this happening? It's not because of the fund lacking. You know? This is because they are not able to cope up with the market. This is not because of the fund, they are lacking fund, only fund. Fund is one of the reasons, but fund is not only the reason. And what we show in the market or what we show on the data is that they have closed their venture because of the fund lack. But we should work on this also. Policy implementation should be good. We talked about subsidy here, we are showing that these are the examples or 
uh, who have got subsidies from the government. I have not got a single rupee subsidy, yet we are success. So subsidy should not be our motto or goal to enter into the market. We have not applied for minor or something we have applied, but we have not applied for much of the subsidies. Many people come to our stall at DHD also and tells us that we have not applied for subsidies. Please come to our department. I told them I don't go to the departments. I work in the market. <laughs> I, it's not my job to go to department and uh, ask for subsidies. I go to market and sell my product. It's not my job to go to departments. It's your job to look for the entrepreneurs who are working in the market when they have applied to your 25 departments. And that's how the work should be done. You, to, you should find the flexibility, flexibility with the entrepreneur. That this is the problem he's facing with the market and we should work on that particular part with particular entrepreneur. Assembleness, the assembled model would, would be good for entrepreneurs. That's why people, uh, new entrepreneurs does not go for the innovation also. How will I work on this? My brother also says me many times, Chodna, we will go for some, uh, what we say, agency or dealership or, uh, when, when I started, see, uh, I told you now, I belong to a rural uh, geography. My grandmother uh, had cattle at my home. I'm a bada hua between cattle. And I have done my electrical engineer from mm -hmm. Bangalore. I came back after all my civil services journey and I have been HR and I came back to my hometown and my grandmother told me, don't come into this sector. I told that I'll be going into dairy sector. Earlier I was going for particularly farming sector only. I thought that I'll be making a modern dairy farm and showing it to my city how it can be done. It's, it's more than just cattle dung and all this thing. We can milk by machines also. So <laughs> she was all in tension that after doing all this engineering and HR job, we IS ki tayari kar raha tha aur kal bolta hai dood nikalunga mein. <laughs> so he was all in tension. That's the fear our elders have by coming into this sector. That's why I wanted to say at that time, okay, we want to move towards cities rather than going to the rural side of the country. So how will you motivate that entrepreneur to go to the rural, city, uh, rural area? That's how you have to do it. Motivate them that you don't have to worry about the government agencies or the permissions. agency will come and say, okay, you have boiler license, you have taken labor license, but you don't have the fire license. Okay, your 10 days are gone, roaming around that agency particularly. It's not wrong because when the uh, when something will happen, mm -hmm. we will blame the government only. But that needs to be done at the earlier part. When an entrepreneur have registered itself as a company or something, then all the agencies should work on that entrepreneur or they should send some representative that what help do you need, what all you don't know about the work, we will help you out. On the later stage, it's not work workful. In the later stage, you just penalize them. So that's one thing. Then the market thing, how do you get to know about the market also? But obviously business is business. You have to do it in the, in the manner what government has told you. But it's not about criticizing, ma'am, but... No, no, absolutely. Yes, but uh, what a new entrepreneur uh, face in the market, this yeah. is the thing there. Yeah, that's why I wanted to start with you and also end with you. Because uh, that's a cry from the heart, really. It's something that all of us, especially the ones here who are from the government, really need to think about. It, that how do we make that journey easier? Because uh, it's, it's very nice to talk about being a startup. It's, it's a very inspiring thought. But the actual journey, the actual steps in the journey, I think it's the government's job to make it easier. And all of us must work together on that aspect also. I'll just impinge on whatever timing regulations are and I'll allow one question. One question. Yes, please. Any feedback from the ministry, whether 
I don't think this is a grievance redressal forum, and neither is this a question. So that we will deal with offline. I don't think this is at all the place to ask such questions. Sorry. No, actually, madam, I. Actually, madam, I. Uh, t uh, at that time, I tell one uh, one example. Actually, we make the platform. Any body, any institution, any individual with higher studies uh, focus came to our lab, prepared their project, and use our infrastructure to do the uh, their, their research. We uh, provide the infrastructure in a uh, uh, in exchange of a minimum infrastructure uh, service charge. We develop a contract research organization. There are uh, infrastructure of mice on dif different transgenic mice, different zebra fishes, guinea pigs. You you people come there use our infrastructure and do the, the research as your own. Thank you. Thank you to all the panelists for their very dedicated and uh, very thoughtful inputs from everyone. The presentations were also amazing and your thoughts were also very, very well put together. And I thank the audience for their patience. Thank you. <laughs>